Okay, I'm going to try a brief uh, foray into demonstrating some of the stuff I do with Photoshop. Um, no promises on expertise, but if you can use some of it, awesome. So I've got a bunch of images, and one of them that I enjoy uh, looking at is from last night's presentation is the Leo triplet. So I've got a couple of different versions of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate the use of layers and an ability to process. Uh, hopefully it won't be too long and hopefully many will work right this time because that's what you get when you have freeware on a slower computer. Okay, so we're into Photoshop. Now, you can try and stack things with various stacking software, but many times details kind of get averaged out or washed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load two images I took last night of the Leo triplet, one after 25 frames, one after I think 35 frames during a live HDR stacking process. So they're different illuminations. I'm going to go to File, Script, Load Files to Stack. I'm going to browse. I'm going to go to the two Leo triplet TIFF files from last night. They're here. Click OK. And what you're going to see over on the right hand side is a list of layers in your layer window. So these are the original files. And you see this eyeball here? You click on it, an image disappears. What's real important, and I'm not going to get into the distinction for our purposes right now, just worry about the opacity setting, because that determines just what degree you can see through the layer that you're looking on. If it's 100%, you can't see through it. If it's 0%, it's invisible. If you're somewhere in between, like let's say 50%, not 500, 50%, then what it does is you get some of the benefit of the top layer while including everything from the bottom layer. Now you can also reorder these. I'm going to make that one that's on the bottom now 100%. And let's make the dimmer one 50%. And so there you can see what's happening. And it's just, it's not really adjusting the cores of the galaxies, but it's adjusting your background brightness or illumination. But it also accentuates the uh, vignetting around the edges, something I don't want to do. So I'm going to take the order back to where it was. And so I've still got some vignetting. Let's bump that up to 70%. So I have a little bit less vignetting. Let's call it good. So we're going to use the combination of these two as our master tool to start working with. So I'm going to merge down, which takes the top layer and merges it with the bottom, or merge visible. In this case, there's only two, so it doesn't matter. But before I start working on something, I right click on the layer and I duplicate it. That way, not if, but when I clobber something, I always can go back to a reasonable starting point. So now that I'm here, I'm going to work on copy. And the first thing that I like to do is I go to lower left, I zoom into about 200% to give me an idea of what I'm looking at in terms of noise, detail, etc. And so like here I'm seeing some dust lanes. Yeah, I'm seeing more dust lanes, seeing some good stuff. But in, in M65 and 66, both of them, um, I'm seeing the core is right. I mean, it's starting to blow out, but not egregiously. But if I get too creative and too uh, aggressive, I lose detail in the inside. 
I don't want to do that. So my first step, I'm going to go in to camera raw filter. So filter camera raw filter. When I'm in here, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it more readily. It's one thing I don't care for in here is it doesn't let you navigate very well within your image. But so we're going to focus on the cores of these two guys here. So we're going to drop highlights. See what happens to the size of the core in both cases. If I maximize highlights, they blow out. If I minimize, they get a lot smaller. Now, whites can have a similar kind of effect. They can blow out the brights. They also can impact everything else. Now, in minimizing the highlights and the whites, look at what I did. You've still got a bright point at dead center in these galaxies, but the central cores radiate more gradually. They're not dominating like they were. So once you've done this with your highlights and your whites, the next step I take is I look at exposure. Because what I want then is not just to minimize the highlights in the center, but I want to bring out the detail in the periphery. Of course, you can't have too much of a good thing. I'm getting a lot of aqua colors. If you look at my histogram at the top, it's uh, spreading out quite a bit. So I typically don't increase my exposure by more than plus one, at least not in any single step, because it's iterative. You do these adjustments, you click OK, and then you'll see we'll come back, we'll revisit things, and we can bring, you know, once again, we can drop highlights and whites and increase the exposure time again and iteratively increase overall illumination but keep our bright cores under control. So I'm going to go with about a point I'm going to go with about a point eight for con for exposure increase. Now what that did do is as you would expect it increased the illumination of the overall image. So, of course, with the uh, software here in the, in the default tab, you can adjust blacks and it's going to darken just like adjusting your black point in your histogram when you're using a live image. But you notice how, because I've got some vignetting around the edges, it pretty much accentuates the vignetting and doesn't do as much perceptibly in the center of the field. The field goes from being not flat to being even more not flat. So instead, I'll go to the Tone Curve tab. And from here, I'll go to Dark. And you see how you still get accentuation of the, uh, of the vignetting, but it's not as bad. You have a, and maybe it's just me, but it looks like you have a little better control over your entire field of view if you use this dark instead of the other dark. Now, if you're looking at a, uh, at a nebula, you can adjust the um, shadows, and that goes after the really faint detail that you know nebulas are great with. In this particular case, it doesn't really help us a whole lot in terms of the periphery of the galaxies. Um, it just adds to the background illumination. Yeah, I'm gonna make a liar out of me. We actually do have a little more coming out. So let's do that. Now let's compensate them by dropping darks a little bit. So we've got some decent peripheral illumination. Now, this is all well and good, but I want some detail in those galaxies too. So then I go over to the detail tab. And here, you can adjust your sharpening. It's one of the many ways that are multiple ways that you can adjust sharpening in Photoshop. Um, now, in this case, we make that adjustment and then we find ourselves 
with an image that has this fine grain noise in it. We have the option of using the noise reduction luminance slider to control for that. But to be honest, I find that the uh, I like the Topaz denoise system better. I just think it gives a it gives you it feels like it gives you more control, especially when you've got more gross noise like walking noise and stuff like that. Now we can adjust in terms of the detail, the size of the of the sharpening radius, and it does make a difference. If you take a look at the galaxy there, we're getting a lot more detail as we go through, and that's pretty cool. All right, so I think we're almost there in our first round of the iteration. Now, the other thing that we see here is that the background isn't bad in terms of color, but it has kind of an aqua or bluish hue to it. I prefer to have more of a gray or a brown background. So under the HSL adjustment tab, I click on saturation. Because I don't want to change the illumination of the image, I just want to change the color a little bit. I'm going to drop the saturation for the aquas. And let's try the blues too. But if I did the blues, it gave me a little bit of a red tint. I don't want that. But dropping the aquas definitely makes a difference. Okay, I think I might just drop the blue just a scotch. And there we go. So that's our first our first pass. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to back this out to about 60%. So now we've got some detail. We've got a little more illumination in the galaxies themselves, and we haven't blown out the core. Now, one of the things I like to try every time, I don't necessarily keep the settings, is the uh, auto tone and auto color. You see how it brightened up, it blued up, and the cores blew out. The same with auto color. Didn't get as much blue, but it blew out the cores. Now, because I don't really care for that view, I'm just going to control Z and get out. I am going to go back to the camera raw filter. Now you might ask why am I doing this while I still have any inherent noise embedded in my image. With the Topaz denoise tool I find that if you denoise too early or too egregiously and then come back and do more adjustments with Photoshop, you can introduce a black band. And I don't mean a little black band like these little guys down here, which will go away when we denoise, but I mean something more akin to the strip on the edge that is a function of poor polar alignment on my part, but that band will appear in the image itself which is kind of weird and it, it's kind of difficult to remove. So we're in iteration two with camera raw filter. And again, highlights going to drop. Whites, we're going to see if it makes a difference. In this case, I'm going to keep the whites where they're at because we're at a stage now where the whites are helping keep the detail in the arms but readily available to us. And then I'm going to bump up the exposure time. So I'm just under one. I've got some decent peripheral detail in the galaxies. I haven't totally decimated my cores. And I think that that'll work. Now, another setting which is handy is what we call texture. Texture is more like applying gross 
course uh, detail. And if you notice, look what's happening as I get more and more aggressive, I get more and more detail in the galaxies. Now that is, texture is especially handy when you get into large scale detail like in big, uh, um, big nebulas, you know, like the rosette, for instance. You also have a thing called clarity. And you see what that does. It does illuminate some areas a little bit by the way it, the algorithm draws together the brights and the darks. Um, and it effectively increases illumination a little bit and then contrasts simultaneously. That's my best explanation. Um, it's overly simplified. And if you're a purist, you'd say he's not right. Well, it's doing something like that. <laughs> um, D haze is another one that's kind of interesting. And what that does, that goes into hazier regions. Like if you have a nebula that you're going after it and you really want to call out some detail in areas, but it's whether it's uh, moonlight washing things out or what it is, D haze can help you control that background a bit as well. You see what I did to my background here? Now, I'm not going to use it in this case because I don't need to. I can control my background a different way. And dehazing can, that especially with texture combined, the two can help uh, give you a cartoony feel. And speaking of cartoons, let's look at vibrance. You see what that did? It made a difference in your color schemes. And it's, it's comparable to saturation. But it's different. How they're different, I don't know. Um, I don't know if vibrance manifests change predominantly in bright objects, or I, I don't know. But vibrance is nice. Like in this case, if we're gentle with it, we see some coloration coming out in the galactic cores without egregiously affecting color elsewhere. Kind of like that effect. Now, background, again, we're gonna to go to our tone curve tab. Then we're gonna to go to the darks. And we're going to drop that dark to where we get to a point that we like it. This is about where I like to see it. And I don't think that I want to do any more sharpening here. But I am going to drop my aquas again. So we're to there. All right. So now we've got a decent field. We've got a decent background. We've got some nice detail. We don't have blown out galactic cores. Uh, in the end, if you want to vignette your image, you click under the uh, effects tab and oh look at that wow look, ooh, hey whoa i'm easily impressed so bear with me i'm not going to do any vignetting here so click ok we're going to end iteration two in camera raw filter now i talked about the black bar here on the left again that is because malincam sky will stack your images and will align your images as they stack. But because my polar alignment wasn't perfect, it wasn't so far off that it elongated my stars, but it was far enough off that the 10 to 15 minutes it took to accumulate the data for this image, the scope drifted that far across the field. And so what you have is images that are stacking up that effectively the first image might be, you know, from here to here. The final image spanned from here to somewhere out here. And it just is off screen. So we'll crop that in the end. Um, now, one other trick that we don't need it here, but 
Let's say hypothetically you have a satellite that comes through, much like last night I had uh, a batch of, I think, nine satellites come through together in one of the other images. It's pretty awesome. This little lasso, that allows you to do a freehand selection on something. We're going to go down here with our mouse and we're going to draw a circle around these horizontal bands. The horizontal banding is there because the dark I was using was set up for a gain of 40 and a 20 second exposure. However, a bunch of frames were stacked on here with 25 second exposures. That's an artifact you get if your darks aren't perfectly aligned with what you're doing on screen. So I got my lasso tool. I selected that area. Now what I want to do is I kind of want to smooth it out. It could be a satellite trail, it could be dark like this, or it could be even a star. So we go edit content aware fill. It's got an automated system where it takes a look at the illumination within and the area around that that you've chosen. You're here, automatically goes in, and it shows you what it looks like after the fact. And bada boom, bada bing, that's the area that we were working with. It looks pretty good. You wouldn't know that there's something going on in there, except if you take a look at the circle on the left, there's stars that were in there that are no longer in there. So that's the drawback. Content aware fill is very powerful. We'll use this as a better example. And it's going to think about it. So <laughs> it doesn't look like you did anything, especially in darker areas. This works great. But again, it figures out what it thinks is best to do in the area you're interested in and we just completely wiped out this bright star so you got to be careful with that and I only use the I only use this getting towards the end of my workflow so this is where we're at I'm gonna zoom into 200% we've got a bit of noise as anticipated we've got some detail which is cool so now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to filter Topaz Labs for, and this, this is where any of these plugins would be if you had additional filtration plugins. And then I'm going to take this box and slide it over so I can see these more clearly. And right now we're just at default values. It's generating the side-by-side -side preview. Now, you see it cleaned up all kinds of that background mush, right? But it also might have hurt our detail a little bit in the galaxy itself. So one of the things you can do here, I like to use manual because I like to play around with things. I can increase my sharpening and see what that does. And so I just increased by sharpening, by increasing sharpening and not touching noise, I increased background noise and some granulation in the galaxy. So I probably don't want to do that. Instead, I'm going to drop the noise level a little bit. I return sharpen back to default. So I've still got some background noise, but not as bad as it was. And I've got more detail in the galaxy. If you look carefully, 
you see some dark lanes coming right into the core that you can barely make out in the original. So let's back out to 50% and see what our image looks like. And that looks pretty good. Now we still have these bands down here. So I'm going to just increase denoise slightly and see what that does. And cue the Jeopardy music in the background. Yeah, would you look at that? So those bands, there's if you know to look for them, you'll see them. But just that little touch in the in the increased noise, or the that little increase in the renew, remove noise filter got rid of them for the most part. And it did so in a way that we don't have to worry about um, using the content aware correction. So you see that they're kind of they're their effect is muted down here. So, so there we go. So I've got what I want. I'm going to click Save. And then it's going to chug away for a few seconds. Now, but this is going to take longer if you're because this image was taken with two by two binning the effective pixel count is a lot less than the 10 million plus if I were using just standard you know no binning the more pixels the longer it's going to take to resolve this but it's not going to be gross um, you know it's enough time for you to listen to me to drone on and stuff like that And we're almost there. And it automatically closes when done. And so there we have it. So that is the latest rendering after denoising and sharpening. And that is now our overall view. So before we go much further, let's take a look at that lower left. And let's just see, there's a little bit of evidence left of those bands. So I've got my lasso tool. And I'm going to be careful not to select the star. But I'm going to select one of those bands, do content aware fill. And pretty much got rid of it. And here we've got a little bit of a illumination effect from that same issue. Same thing, content aware fill. And again, this this works real nicely when you have satellite streak through as well. But the problem is if you do this and you're close to a star like here I might be introducing a little bit of a oh good sometimes when you get too close to a bright point source like this it'll actually bleed into the space you're trying to fix because what it's doing is it's averaging the area within your selection with data around the periphery of it and if you have something that's too bright, well, you're going to average with something bright and it's going to look like a nebula. 
All right, well, I think we've got those under pretty good control. Got this little dark artifact right here. Gonna get rid of that because there we go. It looks a little bit better. Now, it was a dark artifact compensating for some of the surrounding material. Here you can see there's a little faint flare, real faint. And that's what I was talking about. It brought in some of the light from that brighter star. That I could live with. And so there we are. And if we wanted to, we could go in for a final third round in the camera raw filter. And we could use vibrance, bring out a little more orange in those galactic cores. And we can look at texture to bring out a little more detail in the galaxies. And I do believe that I can live with that. I'm going to click OK. And then finally, I'm going to go to a rectangular selection tool over here on the left. And I am going to crop out that band. So here, that vertical magenta line means I'm centered right to left. I'm going to come down a little further. And I'm centered top to bottom. So by doing this, obviously when you crop, you make the image scale greater, and if there's noise, it accentuates the appearance of the noise. But again, here I'm removing some vignetting as well as evidence of uh, bad polar alignment. So then you go to image, crop, boom, and there you have it. And I am going to delete the master layer. We've got this. Actually, you know what? Let's not. Let's just do a quick show. We have the new layer. The original. You see all that detail that we were able to pull out of those galaxies? I mean, it's just really cool. You know, I'm a little bit biased, but kind of like it. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I want to tweak the background illumination just a scotch. I'll darken it a little bit. So at some point, you start to lose the periphery of the galaxies. But I kind of like that darker background, don't you? All right. Now we're done. So file, export, export as. Because if you hit save, it's going to save it as a Photoshop object. Export as. Now I had done this before and had a glitch with uh, many cam so what I'm going to do because you can save it in different formats but in this case I'm not going to mess with it again so I'm going to save it as a top quality JPG just your default stuff and you can put a suffix on it if you want but because I brought in the different frames it doesn't have a title yet so I'm going to export it and I'm going to tell it where to go and be nice about it. And since I already have one out there that I want to overwrite anyway, I've got the name of it, name of the, the name of the image, the metadata that captured it, and then PS, which says this has been photoshopped. So that's Matt shorthand. And I want to replace it. There we go. Now. Let's open that bad boy up. And so this is what the image looks like. This is just in the uh, Windows 10 Photos app. It's just standard in Windows 10. And something I like to try before I'm all done is to see what happens with the clarify slider in here. See if it draws out more detail. 
So you get all the way at the end, you start to blow out the cores a little bit. But you do get some illumination in the ring or in the rings, in the arms. So I'm going to strike a balance. And I'm going to call it good right about there. Because otherwise, it's not as nice. Click save. And there we go. And then if we want to zoom in, you know, you've, if you zoom in a ways, you start to see some breakdown in the image. And, you know, if somebody wants to look at my images and go, well, you should have accounted for that. Well, yeah, but, you know, I just did a demo in 45 minutes, which if I were doing it just myself would take about 10. And I can live with that return on my time investment. So there you go. Thanks for joining me.